It's time to get back on Yusuko. I know I haven't done a Yusuko video for quite a while, but I just realized that it's coming up in December. Holy heck! That's crazy! December is literally in three months. So it's time for me to get back on the grind, and I'm gonna do that for teaching you guys how to grind. Hooray! Hello everybody, I'm Karar, and today we're gonna be talking about how to code. Because to do Yusuko, you gotta know how to code, I think, right? So when it comes to deciding on a language, I, you guys know that I recommend C++ because it's such an easy language to learn, such an easy language to write, such a fast language to write, such a fast language to execute, and yeah, such a good language all around. And remember, you don't even have to know it super well. If you're just learning C++ for a year ago, it's completely fine because you don't have to know everything in the language. Literally, I can't even manipulate strings in C++, but I can still use it ago. Because Yusuko doesn't need anything. Yusuko is mostly focused on the algorithms and that kind of stuff. You don't have to really be super familiar with the language. And that's why C++ is good, because it's really short and you don't have to know that much of it. Now, personally, I learned C++ from the new Boston channel. You guys could go check him out when you guys get the chance. But he, he like has a really detailed overview and like he has like a bunch of videos, like a really long tutorial. And I watched the first 15 and I was already ready for Yusuko, right? But today, I'm gonna be teaching you guys all the important stuff for Yusuko in one video. And not even gonna be that long because you just don't need to know that much stuff. So first thing first, let's go into my starter kit. The things you gotta have to code in C++. Let's start with our IDE. And I personally use REPL. Okay, I know it's not technically an IDE or whatever because it's not like a program or whatever, but it's online, accessible anywhere, you don't even need to download anything, and it runs stuff. I went to C++ IDE that are like really hard to download and stuff, so I personally wouldn't go through the hassle of just use REPL because you don't need to download anything and it works automatically, but if you're interested in having an IDE where you could do debugging and stuff, you could use Xcode on Mac, you could also use VS Code, I try to get that working but it doesn't, it's really hard to get working, there's Code blocks which works on both Windows and Mac, just like VS Code. And then, if you want something that just works on Windows, that like you don't have to do that much setup for, there's also Visual Studio, like not Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio. But the reason why REPL is just fine is that you don't really need debugging. If you want to debug stuff, you can just print stuff out in the like normal command line. You don't need to have like a separate stepping through each thing. I know it's helpful to some people, but you don't need it. Second thing you gotta know, C++ reference is your friend. Not just my friend, your friend too, okay? Check it out whenever you get a chance. Literally, you don't have to remember anything. This is why Yusuko is like, not that language oriented. It allows you to use the C++ reference thing during the test. So you don't even have to memorize any of the syntax. You literally just go over here and have all the syntax for you. You don't even have to me like memorize functions or like the data types. It's all here. So even if you're not super familiar with the language, you can still use it. Cause you get to search up like, let's say you don't know how to use an array. You just search up array in C++ and you go to here and you're fine. So now time for the legit stuff. So getting into the Yusuko stuff, first things first, you gotta read stuff in. And it's super simple compared to Java, where you had to do like scanner sc is equal to new scanner, new file, x.in, blah blah blah. It's really complicated in Java, but in C++, super simple. Watch this. See, it's literally that simple in C++. So basically over here, we got our include fstream, which basically includes file stream, which reads from files. Then here we use namespace std because that's standard library always include it in the top because everything you're going to use is probably from that library. And then if stream is basically your f in which reads stuff in. And then upstream is your f out which spits stuff out into a file. And then you just put the file names in here and you boy bam and you're done. So this is how you read it in. Simple. See literally like five characters and then to see out you just do f out and then end. And it makes sense. The arrows point to the end because you're reading it into end and then and goes into the out. Very legit. But what's the point of reading stuff in when you can't store it? So let me teach you the basic stuff you gotta need. Gonna gonna need to store stuff. So first thing first, primitives. That's like ints, doubles, longs, long longs, cares, and they all have their purpose. Ints is just for like one, two, three, four. Doubles is for 1.2, 1.33, all that good stuff. Longs is for really long integers, long long is for even longer integers, and then cares are for like letters of the alphabet. Let me just write them all out for your reference. Here you go. In 10, 1, double, 1.2, really long integer, really, really really long integer, a letter like A. And now for some more complicated storing material, strings. You can do string s. Okay, and make sure you include string at the top because string is not automatically included for you. So you go here and you include string. And then you can literally just set this to like a, B, C, D, and that's how you store a string. Next, arrays, of course, just like a list of stuff. You just do it like this. Int, 
or the type that you want to store, A, and then brackets, and then the number of stuff you want to store, so 10. That makes a 10 array where everything's initialized to some random thing. It's not initialized to zero, remember that. So make sure you set your arrays to zero before you use them. But isn't this so much nicer than Java? Java you literally had to do int a bracket equals new int bracket and then the size. It's crazy. C++ is superior. You hear that Java people? Okay, don't worry, don't worry. I will talk about Java later. It's not that bad, but like C++, beautiful. And then vectors, you gotta include vector. It's basically a list with variable size. Array is fixed size, vectors are variable size. So you do hashtag include vector, and then over here you just do vector, and then in brackets you put the type that you want, let's say we want integers, and then we do v. And then if you want to add something to your vector, you just do v dot push back. And then getting something from a vector is just as simple as getting something from an array. v, zero, gives you the first element. Very nice. Another storage thing is map, and that just basically makes it so that you map one thing to another. So you could say, if I put in one, I want to get back five. Or if I put in two, I want to get like three. And the reason why this is useful is so that like, you can have completely random numbers that aren't like in a row, like they're in an array, but they still would store it in like a good amount of space. Let me do an example, map int int, that basically says we're mapping an integer to an integer, m. And then if we do m zero is equal to one, that means that if I put in zero to our m, it'll give us back one. But if I just do like m120 equals one or two, let's do something different, okay. It literally only takes up like two, two places. It doesn't have to fill in everything from zero to 120 like an array does. And that's all the storage stuff you gotta know. Already we covered every single storage thing you gotta know. And literally this is the only storage thing that I use in Usico. And now we're ready to move on to the math stuff. So first thing first, you include your math.h, hashtag include math.h, and this basically gives you all the useful stuff, like min, max, absolute value, and power, and let me just do an example. So let's take out all the fn stuff because I don't want to use files right now. So over here, let's just see out. First, let's try the max, so max of 1 and 2, and then min of 1 and 2, and then absolute value of negative 1, let's try, and then let's try pow of 2 comma 3. So, the max of 1 and 2 is 2, right? And then the min of 1 and 2 is 1, right? And then the absolute value of negative 1 is 1, right? And then the power of 2 to 3 is 8. Very nice. And that's all the math stuff we gotta know. Moving on, bro, we're moving through this so fast. Okay, so, next thing you gotta know are loops. So, four loops are just done like this. 4 int i equals 0, i less than n, uh, i, i less than 10, i plus plus. And that basically goes i to 0, and then every time you go through the loop, it adds one all the way up to 10. So it basically does this for loop 10 times. Pretty similar, it's exactly like Java basically. And then another loop you gotta know is the while loop. Just like while something is true, like one is, two is less than five maybe. And then that's gonna loop forever cause two is less than five always, unless you're bad at adding like me. I, you get the idea. And then we also got if statements, which are just if something is true, you do this and then otherwise you do that. And then if you want to else if like a cool kid, if you're a super sophisticated boyo, you can just do else if, something, false, and then bam. And lastly, when you're doing methods, it's literally just like Java, you just put the return type. Let's say we want to return an integer, and then we put our name, which is a trap, some, I don't know. And then we put in what we want to trap, let's say we want to trap a name or something. And then you put a return one. That's how you do method. I probably should cover basic operations too, just in case you're used to Python, because the operation is slightly different. So this is how you do powers, right? And then adding, subtracting is all normal. And then dividing is always going to be integer division unless you're doing with double. If you want to do modulus, you just do like see out like five mod three, and that should give you two. Let's just run that and see. Whoops, gotta take out the while loop. It was running forever. I'm trolling. Yep, prints out two. All right, this is getting kind of messy. Let's clean this up and move on to the next topic. And now we're going to include something called algorithms. And what algorithm lets us do is sort stuff, do cool stuff to vector than arrays. It's just basically for sorting and like binary search and all that good stuff. But let me do an example. So let's make a vector. Whoops, I spoke wrong. It's algorithm, not algorithm. Don't forget to leave out that S. And now we have our vector here. Oh wait, this is not a very useful vector. It's sorted already, let me change that. Cool, so now we have an unsorted vector. And now let's say we wanna like put it in sorted order. We just do sort v.begin v.end. 
You don't really have to understand what B.Begin begin and B.Ended ended is not really useful, but just remember that this is how you do sort. And then if you just print out a, a, a vector using a for loop, you use a for each loop even. We're getting sophisticated now. For int i in b, that's how you do a for loop. So it basically goes through each integer i in b. So we go set i to 7, then 5, then 4, then 6. Then we had to print it out. See out i. See? Sorted! It's crazy. If you don't want to get too sophisticated, but you still want to like sort it in decreasing order, what you could do is you could just negate everything in the vector, make a new vector, and then just sort that, and then negate everything again, and then you just sort it in like reverse order. Other cool things you could do is that if you have a sorted array, you could find where something fits in. What do I mean by that? Let's say that we want to say what position is 3 in. Then we could just say lower bound of 3. It will basically go through the array by binary search and find where the 3 is and then return that index. Let me show you guys. So if we do C out of lower bound and then we do beat up again, beat up n, and then we say 3. We should get 2 because the index of 3 is 2. Whoops, 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 wait. Lower bound returns an iterator. So if you just want to get rid of the iterator nonsense, what you just do is you subtract v dot begin. You don't really need to know what iterators are, just remember that when you do lower bound, you have to subtract v dot begin. And then it gives us 2 as we expect. There's another thing called upper bound, which basically gives you the highest place where you can put a number so that the whole array remains sorted. So if we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, we put in 3. The highest place we can put it is actually in index 3, not 2. Let's change this to upper bound, and then it gives us 3. Very cool. Cool, we're done with the algorithms. Moving on to data structures. There are literally only two data structures that I use in all of C++, other than the storage ones, right? Q and set. So let me show you what they do. Hashtag include Q. Hashtag include set. So basically what a queue does is it takes in what you put in and then it spits out in the order that you put it in. So let's say I put in a 1 and then a 2 and then it takes stuff out of the queue. I'm like, give me back something. It spits out the 1 and then it spits out the 2. Let's say I put in a 1 then put in a 2 then pull out the 1 then put in a 3 and then try to pull something out. Then it pulls out the 2. Let me show you guys. So basically you do queue and then the type that we want to put in the queue which are integers and then Q, and then you do Q.push, 1, and Q.push, 2, right? And then we see out Q dot top. I mean, top, front. Yeah, that's what it is, front. And then what we expect it to do is we do put in the 1, then the 2, and then pull out the 1. So it should print out a 1. Very cool. So that basically tells you what's at the front of the queue, right? But to actually like get rid of it from the queue, you have to do Q.pop. So it starts out by putting in a 1, then it puts in a 2. So now the front is a 1, we print out the front, and then we take out the front. So now it's just a 2. So that means if we see out the front again, it should be a 2 now. So you get the idea. Now set, set, the type we want, int s. And then we do s.insert this time, and then we do 1. But if we try to insert a 1 again, it won't work. So basically what a set does, it just includes all the distinct numbers that you put into it. So I can put in like five ones, so I insert one, again, again, again. But even after adding five ones, it'll only have one one in it. So we just do C out one, I mean, no, what, S dot size, and it should be one. Yep, that's right. So basically, if we added two, something different, then the size would be two. Try that, size is two. Very cool. And that's literally all the C++ you gotta know for years ago. If you didn't remember everything, I know I went fast, you literally just search it up on C++ reference. So basically, all you gotta know about C++ is what exists. And then you can literally just search up anything you want and just do it. If you're interested in learning the language basically four years ago, just look at this video and like try to memorize like what I'm trying to do here because this is basically all you guys gotta know. For all the data structures they brought up, make sure you look on C++ reference for all the methods they have because there's a lot of things that you can use and it also gives you examples on how to use it. So if you guys are confused on that, just look at C++ reference and you're good. I will probably make one for Java too, so if you guys want that, just let me know and I will do it. I'm not really familiar with Python and the other programming languages, but if you really guys want me to do it, if you guys just plead me to do it, I will do that too. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Comment down below if there's any specific things you guys want me to talk about in these musical crash courses. I'll probably not just focus on language things later, I'll probably focus on algorithms and all that cool stuff, but if there's anything you want right now, just let me know. Thank you guys again for watching and see you guys next time.